called to be a community of kinship together, we gather together in the name of the Triune God. On this Trinity Sunday, we declare our belonging in God, just as the Holy Three, Creator, Son, and Spirit, are one. All of us who identify as Anglican, as Lutheran, as Catholic, as Presbyterian, as Methodist, as united, as evangelical, as atheist, agnostic, as humanist, as Mennonite, all of us who identify as spiritually homeless, spiritual but not religious, who identify as activists and we who don't, mystics, believers, seekers of all kinds, people of all ages, those who support you to be here, we say, you belong, we belong. People of African descent, of Asian descent, of European descent, of First Peoples descent in this land and abroad, and people of mixed and multiple descents and of all languages spoken here, we say, you belong, we belong. Bodies with all abilities and challenges, those living with any chronic medical conditions, visible and invisible, mental or physical, we say, you belong, we belong. People on all parts of the continuum of gender identity and expression, including those who are gay, bisexual, heterosexual, transgender, cisgender, queer folks, lesbian, the sexually active, the celibate, and everyone for whom those labels don't apply. We say, you belong, we belong. We join in the mysterious dance of the Trinity, intimate, powerful, perplexing, beautiful, and welcome each other as we learn the steps and the melody. We are many, we are one. We are in the image of God together. In the name of the Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Good morning and welcome to worship with us here this morning. This morning, as many of you know, is Trinity Sunday and is our, as is our custom, for Trinity Sunday we do a joint ecumenical service between Trinity Lutheran Church and Holy Trinity Anglican Church. Even though we are in the midst of a pandemic, we didn't want that to stop us this year. So we do hope you enjoy the service we have all put together so that we can worship both together as Lutherans and as Anglicans. Again, thank you for joining us this morning. Welcome to the kids' message. Kids, come on, gather around. So glad you're here. Today, we're celebrating Trinity Sunday. That's the Sunday that Holy Trinity Anglican Church and Trinity Lutheran Church worship together. And if you've been kind of joining us in worship, you'll see parts and people from each church. But I want to talk to you a little bit about Trinity. What does that mean? And we have some godly playthings to help us with that. Let's begin. I have three white circles. We use them sometimes when we're talking about baptism. We use them to talk about God, who is Father, Creator, and Jesus, the Son, the Redeemer, and the Spirit, the Sustainer. We think about God, the creator. We think about the waters of creation, and the waters of the flood, and the waters of baptism. When we think about creation, we have pictures that help tell us the story, and I brought one of them. When God created the day and the night, and it was good, and he made the sun to shine as the light in the day, and the moon and the stars to be the light at night. God creating. And once there was a man who said such amazing things and did such wonderful things that people asked him who he was. And one time when they asked him, he said, I am the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. And that light is Jesus, born of Mother Mary, who grew up to be a man who died on the cross, but was alive again and is still with us in every time and every place. God, the Holy Spirit, the wind that rushes in, we think of sometimes as a dove that flies where it will. We think about God as creator, God as redeemer, as light, as Jesus, God as spirit and sustainer, one who helps us. Hmm. We have one God we think about as creator and redeemer and sustainer. One God. I wonder God who created the water is still creating. I wonder how Jesus is a light and where we see that light today. I wonder why we picked a dove to be the symbol of the Holy Spirit. I wonder when you pray, when you listen to, for God, and when you talk to God in words or in your thinking, do you listen more for God, the creator who cares for the world, or more for Jesus who walked among us, the light of the world? 
or more for God the Spirit who blows and flies where it will. One God. Hmm. Before we end, I'm going to change the light. This is the light of the world. It doesn't leave us, but it changes. Wonder if it changed. Not yet. James, can you see it? It's going up and up and up. I bet it will fill the whole church and go out into the world to all the places and to your house. In one church, we end our kids' messages by saying, Amen. Let us confess our sins and ask God for forgiveness. We have been created for goodness by you, triune God, but we continue to be filled with despair and fear. Your word would enable us to speak of joy to others but we often offer judgment. The spirit which breathes hope and peace into us could be shared with everyone we meet, but rather than giving peace to those around us, we prevent them from breathing. God of wonder and grace, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, brother and redeemer, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, breath of God, have mercy on us. By God's grace, we are saved. The good news is, as true as it was on creation's first morning, Creator God is the redeeming word who is the breath of life for all people. Thanks be to God for forgiveness and new grace in our lives. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Trinity, you are a deep sea into which the more we enter, the more we find, and the more we find, the more we seek. The soul ever hungers in your abyss, Eternal Trinity, longing to see you with the light of your light and as the deer yearns for the springs of water, so our souls yearn to see you in truth. Wrap us in your love that is community and kinship, even as you are mystery. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is a reading from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, until chapter 2, verse 4. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear, and it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening 
And there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the water teem with the living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living thing with which the water teems, and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that all he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth and when they were created. snow and the sun. 
teach us, deflect us, Christ reconnect us, using us gently and making us one. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The Gospel according to Matthew chapter 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to his friends, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Word of the Living God The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Dear people of the Trinities, on Trinity Sunday, when I wrote this sermon last Tuesday, I still was under the influence of articles, media releases and images of American cities falling into chaos as citizens protest the horrible murder of George Floyd. What's being uncovered is centuries-old injustice and violence against African-American people, and it seemed that the pain of years was just spilling into the streets. When I wrote the sermon, I still was under the influence of the image of the American president using the Bible as a weapon after weapons have been used to clear his way to St. John's Episcopal Anglican Church. When I wrote this sermon, of course, the history of my own country, Germany, came to mind. The deadly racial riots against not only Jewish people, but against communist people of the LGBTQ community and against people with special needs. This part of German's history is etched on my heart and has shaped my life. And do I need to mention the discrimination faced by people of color here in Canada? In every th city there is a George Floyd. Meanwhile, the COVID-19 pandemic continues. Some of us are just tired, anxious and overwhelmed. Some of us are mourning loved ones who have died. Some of us are facing economic uncertainty or ruin. And some of us are angry about what's happening in national politics. So let's begin the celebration of Trinity Sunday with the acknowledgement that we need that we urgently need the presence of the triune God, God three in one, God Father, God Son, and God Holy Spirit, more than ever, and that at the same time, it is good and right and necessary to remember that we are created in God's image, as the reading from Genesis has affirmed. God shaped us into God's image, let us make humankind in our image, so Genesis, according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image, in the image of God, they were created. But here is the question. How can we know who we are and what we were made for and who we should be to each other unless we know who God is? One of my favorite authors author is the Franciscan priest and theologian Richard Rohr. In his book, The Divine Dance, he writes about the mystery of Trinity. 
God three in one. And he writes, don't start with a one and try, try to make it into three, but start with a three and see that this is the deepest nature of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Start with a three and see that this is the deepest nature of God, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, start with a three. First, the Triune God is creating. The Triune God does not exist in uniform stasis, rather as also described in Genesis, God self is flowing and moving and is always creating. Or to use Richard Ross' language again, God dances and God is dance. While we, well, we don't like changes and we are often reluctant to embrace what is new, what is unfamiliar and what is uncomfortable. But if God's nature is flow and movement and dance, then we need to find the courage to enter into that same flow, movement, dance. We must be willing to evolve. As churches and as communities, we will not survive, I think, unless we learn how to evolve and to reshape. And I think in order to change, we first need to be honest about our fears and prejudices regretful about our histories and the history of our countries and open, really open, for the tough questions. Is it my deepest desire to be God's partner in building up God's kingdom? Is it my deepest desire to live racial reconciliation and racial equality? Is it my deepest desire to heal creation? Is it my deepest desire to live gracefully and peacefully with difference? Is it my deepest desire not to be complacent and silent anymore when, uh, when we encounter when I encounter injustice? Is it my deepest desire to cope with my own pride, apathy, fear, Prejudice. The artist, the artist Arthur Rublev, in the 15th century, created an icon called the Hospitality of Abraham, also known as the Trinity, and it's one of the most well-known and loved icons in Christianity. And this is the second part. God is communal and hospitable. In this icon, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit sit around a table sharing food and drink. Their faces are nearly identical, but they are dressed in different colors. The Father wears gold, the Son blue and the Spirit green. The Father looks at the Son the Son looks back at the Father, but points toward the Spirit. And the Spirit looks at the Father, but points toward the Son with one hand, and opens up the circle with the other hand, making room for others to join the sacred meal. Clearly, the three people around the table respect and love and enjoy each other. And they radiate openness. There is space at the table for the fewer of the icon, for me, for you, for everyone. As the late theologian and author Rachel Evans put it, this is what God's kingdom is like. A bunch of outcasts and oddballs gathered at a table, not because they are rich or worthy or good, but because they are hungry, because they said yes and there's always room for more. The Triune God is communal and hospitable, and the Triune God is liberating. Last Sunday, we celebrated Pentecost. On this day, we heard the Spirit came unexpectedly, loudly and boldly, sweeping through the house 
where Jesus' disciples were waiting, like the storm that was sweeping today through Edmonton. The Spirit was knocking the followers of Jesus off their feet and pulling them out of their comfort zones, as the Spirit does in these times, pulling us out of our comfort zones in a time when the world is reeling and desperate and waiting for us. So, we are created in God's image, in the image of God creating, in the image of God communal and hospitable, in the image of God liberating. We bear the imprint of this God, and we are the children of the Trinity, the always creating, diverse, communal, hospitable and loving God, who wants to guide us into the whole truth, who God is and who we are. And Trinity has the power to transform our hearts, leading us towards coherence and energy, unity and diversity, hospitality and self-giving love, justice and change. Today, this week and always, as Trinity people, may our lives show, reflect and witness the transformative power and beauty of God Creator, God Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come join the dance of Trinity before our world begun. The interweaving of the three, the Father, Spirit, Son. The universe of space and time did not arise by chance, but as the Come see the face of Trinity, newborn in Bethlehem. Then, bloodied by a crown of thorns outside Jerusalem, the dance of Trinity is meant for human flesh and bone. When Confides the dance in death, God rolls away the stone. Come speak aloud of Trinity as wind and tongues of flame. Set people free at Pentecost to tell the Savior's name. We know the Jesus Christ the Lord, 
who was promised to the people of Israel, who came in the flesh to dwell among us, who announced the coming of the rule of God, who gathered disciples and taught them, who died on the cross to free us from sin, who rose from the dead to give us life and hope, who reigns in heaven at the right hand of God, who comes to judge and bring justice to victory. We believe in God the Creator, who raised Jesus from the dead, who created and sustains the universe, who asks to deliver the people in times of need, who desires all people everywhere to be saved. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who is the form of God present in the Church, who is the guarantee of our deliverance, who leads us to find God's will in the Word, who guides us in discernment, who impels us to act together. Amen. Amen. Death, where is your sting? Not being able to gather in your name, it stings. Our many nations with many tongues unable to sing your praises, it stings. Unable to comfort our dying and unable to grieve together, it stings. Watching with sad resignation the ongoing injuries to justice for all, it stings. For the many freedoms we must now curtail for the sake of others and they for us, it stings. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Chaos seems to be the new normal. This is a time when our eyes have been forced open to experience the normalcy of chaos among the underprivileged. Essential workers are only essential when wealth is threatened. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The pandemic as well as the protests, are a call for witnesses to the truth. There is danger in this. The rights and safety of religious minorities always remain uncertain in times of political and social upheaval. To be a professing Christian, you will always be in the minority. Everywhere, even in ostensibly Christian societies, we who would live in the way Following the lead of Jesus, run the risk of disturbing political authorities. For the sake of these authorities, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. How can we, Lord, in very practical ways, follow you in helping bring peace into the world? God is love. God is patient. God is kind. God does not envy. God does not boast. God is not proud. God is not rude. God is not self-seeking. God is not easily angered. God does not keep records of wrongs. God does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. God always protects, always trusts, always hopes. God always perseveres. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. This may well be the time, this may well be an opportunity that God is providing you to examine what you truly believe, to mature in your faith. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Our wonderful Father is asking us, his children, to be patient, be kind, do not envy, do not boast, do not be proud, do not be rude, do not be self-seeking, do not anger easily, don't hold grudges, always forgive, do not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth, protect the innocent, always trust the Father, always hope in the Spirit, and persevere as Jesus persevered for you. A sign of that maturity is holding your religion and church teachings up to the light, 
This in no way is, mis is mistrusting God. God is the light. If you are a lover of people, you may find many things you've heard about God don't pass the light test. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Whoever you're with this morning, I encourage you to share a sign of peace together. Amen. Join us in singing our offertory hymn, Bright the Vision That Delighted, as found in your bulletin. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give, give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise. Because in the mystery you disclose to us, you reveal your glory as the glory of your Son and the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. Therefore, with all the company of heaven, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name.
us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember, we remember his, his death, we proclaim, we proclaim his, his resurrection, we await, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art who in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the, is the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being, being many, many, are one, are one body, for we, we all share in the one bread. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose, whose power, power working, working in us, 
can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us join in song with both our choirs as we sing, Holy God, we praise your name as found in our bulletins. 